you are now live with me, G3. And tonight is a very special edition of Live with G3. Because we have the one and only Miss Leia Salonga. So let's check who's here to watch. I, like, I feel like all of my friends and all of my family are watching. So I'm a bit conscious. So I might touch my hair a little more. Leia is here. So I just want to say that I've seen Miss Saigon twice. And I've seen the flower drum song. And they're playing our song. And yes, I'm just so... I cannot believe that she said yes to me. And I see her. And we are going to bring her in. Okay, so this woman is somebody that I really admire and she is, for me, uh, the best artist the Philippines has ever produced and she's here. First, the one and only Miss Lea Salonga. <laughs> Hello. Lea! Hi! <laughs> oh my God, wait, wait. you're so pretty. Uh, thank you, let me fix my camera because it's a little, it's angled a little bit weirdly, but it's okay. Ah, uh, there we go. You, I can't believe you said yes. Well, you asked really nice. And I mean, yeah, I, you've been a friend of members of my family for even, way even before I met you. So, right, I mean, right. so you came with a stellar <laughs> reputation even before you and I actually started working together. So, yeah, totally, totally fine. Before we proceed, I just want to tell you three things. And I'm afraid I will never have an opportunity to tell you this. Because like, when okay. we work together, we're always so harang. So, like, three things. So, like, the first TV show I ever watched was Love, Leia. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, <laughs> yes, I do. I was probably three and I have, like, a like super early memory. The second okay. one is Gift Gate had a welcome ah! party for you after you won the Laurence Olivier Award. And it was in some oh. ballroom, some hotel. And me Mandarin. And my sister, it was in the Mandarin. Me, yeah. Yes. Me and my sister Aya, we would go back and forth to Gift Gate to purchase <laughs> just to get all of those vouchers because it was an auction. And oh. we got enough vouchers to be able to be seated in the last room of the ballroom. <laughs> and I saw just a glimpse of you and you were you were wearing a pantsuit. I have a photographic yeah. memory. And we were able to buy a notebook with the 200 oh. vouchers that we were able to accumulate. And lastly, the third one, my favorite song of yours is, are you ready? Yes. Mula noon hanggang... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Do you ever Nothing's wrong with that. Anymore? It's a really good song. I haven't sung it in forever. But it's, an act it's actually a really good piece of music. So it's like... Oh no, no, maganda talaga yung kanta niya. Do you ever get to sing that anymore? Like that's a, my favorite no. love song. Hindi no, na. I haven't I haven't sung it in a long time, but now that it I mean that you've <laughs> mentioned it, it's like maybe I'm going to have to ask Gerard for the next concerts we do if we can like, really? you know, like dust it off and and maybe sing. it's a good song and it would be I interesting know. I mean, to I grew up listening to it. That's yeah. why it's my favorite song of yours. I don't know if you remember that song or if you ever sing that song. I do. Anymore. I actually do. The, the, I don't remember every song I've sung or recorded <laughs> or what. I, it's just impossible. But that's one of the ones that, act, that has stuck in my memory because of just how wonderful I thought it was at the time I recorded it. And I was very young. I was only about 16 yes. years old. But still a good song. <laughs> Super. Tapos maririnig mo talaga yung purity sa voice, di ba? Parang pag, with youth, di ba? Like the same way that you listen to the interviews that you had before when you were so much younger. Yes. And, I mean, like, meron talaga yeah. siyang freshness to it. And yeah. so speaking of songs, you have a new single. Yes, Dream I again. do. Oh my God, yes, I do. Have, grab it. Dream Again is such a, like, I listened to it, like, siguro mga 10 times na, like, before I go to sleep. And it's such a march song. Di ba parang siyang march na song? Parang fight yeah, song. Yeah, it's like, song, a, like a fight song, a call to action song. Without having to be explicitly a call to action song. It's just basically, like, this is what we're going through right now, but this is what I'm looking forward to for the future. You know, and nothing's going to stop me from, from thinking about all those wonderful things that are, like, on the other side of this pandemic. Without mentioning the pandemic, I, I don't think I had to. I don't think the songwriters yeah. had to even, you know, be so obvious about it. It's like, yeah, we're all in this same situation. This is going all, all over the world. So I think everybody understands one another at that level, which is, which is a universal 
thing. Sa so lahat ng tao sa mundo, nakaka-relate sa kantang yan kasi naranasan ng lahat ng, pand- ng pandemya na to. There were frontliners who were in the video who were saying things like, I want to see my patients without this PPE. You know, I want to be able to do errands without paranoia. I want to be able to hug my this, my that. And it's like, I want to go to coffee shops. I want to see shows. I want to be in a show. I want to be on stage. I want to have an art exhibit. I want to, you know, these, these, these kinds of things. And it's inspiring in its own way to look at those photographs and to see what people are looking forward to or wanting to see at the other side of this pandemic. It's, and it's nothing lofty. It's nothing na yes, it's gusto not. kong mall or, or, yeah, or gusto kong, you know, I want to conquer the world. It's like, I want to hug my mom. I haven't seen her in six months. Yung mga ganun? Yeah. It's very, so, it's very hopeful. It's very brave. And it's very, I mean, like, it's very hopeful. It's very positive. Yeah, it's very and, optimistic. Know, like, when I, when yeah. I listen to it, talagang parang gusto mo talagang mag-hope again. Like, you inspire yeah. people. I mean, like, Para talaga siyang fight song. Parang, sige, lalabanan natin to. Hindi naman to magtatagal. I mean, like, with the human spirit and everything. Yeah. But like, you're right. I mean, it's, we, we're going through a singular communal experience. And it's the first time that it's happening. Like, all of us, all over the world, are going through the same thing. And there is a purpose to that. And I know yeah. that you're probably one of the busiest people ever. Like, from <laughs> the time that we were in Love, Leia. And then yeah. all of a sudden, you we have all of this free time. Diba? I know that you had like practice because yeah. you had a skiing accident last year. <laughs> yes. So I, I was I was prepared to be in my house for the long <laughs> haul. Because that because when I, I, I broke my leg last year skiing, like I, I don't think I'll ever do it again. <laughs> just because just because I, I don't have the same sort of hat. Niseko. I'll go back to Niseko. I just don't think I'll ski again. But I'll, I'll snow tube because it's, you're, you're, you're sitting down basically on an inner tube and you're just sliding down a very small hill. So yun pa, yun pa, I will do. Um, but yeah, so after that, I, I, I ended up just stuck in, you know, downstairs of my house. Um, I didn't see the upstairs. Of, I didn't see the second floor of my house for three months because I was oh. basically, yeah, because I was just stuck on the couch in the den. So I had to do everything in the den, like literally everything. Eat, <laughs> um, eat, do, do sa, lahat. I can't go yeah. to the baño. It has to be in the den. So my, my mom decked out the den because she's a badass. My mom decked out the den so that I would not forever. have... Yeah, so that I wouldn't have to leave this room for anything. Um, and so my mom stayed with me uh, for much of the whole time I was recuperating. So she would take me to the hospital for therapy sessions and she'd be watching her Korean telenovelas while <laughs> waiting for me to finish. Because some, some of that therapy, it would last like an hour just to get, my, yeah. just to get the mobility back in my leg. And it's, you know, it's... it's don't... Please don't break a limb. It's a lot. If you're going to break yeah. a limb, make sure it's an arm, your elbow, your wrist. Yun pa, because at least you'll still be able to get around and do stuff. But the leg, when you break a leg, it's like, no, yeah, no, no, no. True. Voila, you're, just, you're totally debilitated. Yeah, but even that did not prepare you for the five months at home. But even, <laughs> yeah, even so... You've learned a new skill. You are now a bread baker. I'm a bread baker. <laughs> Can you believe? I never, you know what? I never thought that I would actually do that. I never thought that I would have the patience to learn how to do it. And you have to start off with something easy, just so that at least you get the basic principles of kneading dough and figuring out what to do with yeast. Because then, I, then, you, then you start graduating into something more difficult. Like I started off with Japanese milk bread, which is really not that hard. And then you move on to baguettes because my daughter wanted me to make baguettes for her. Kasi lang, she just likes baguettes. Yeah. And now, now on a more regular basis, more than, I think, I, I think that's all the only kind of bread I bake now, sourdough. So oh there's my always... God, it's hard. It's, hard. It's, it's not, actually, you know what? It, it's a degree of difficulty. It's really not that hard. However, wow. it's, it's the waiting. You know, medyo ano, if you have no patience, patience if you have no patience, do not, do yeah, because not. I don't believe naman that anything is too hard for you. Diba? You make everything look easy. <laughs> Leia, my God. <laughs> Practice. Diba? Speaking, speaking of, I also want to congratulate you for the last season of The Voice. Oh, I mean, thank like, you so much. Diba? Thank Parang, you. I mean, like, you ended that show 
before the pandemic. And then I know that Ichi was your producer and like Awa yes. was your writer. They were friends of mine. I've worked with them. And how did that feel? I mean, like going through that during the pandemic, like having to there have was a, a lot. show finale. Um, we actually did. We actually did have one. Um, we actually did have one. We figured out how to have one. And it turns out that our version of The Voice was not the only version of The Voice, you know, happening during this coronavirus pandemic. Um, I think even in the U.S., all of the contestants, all of the artists are having to record their stuff at home. They're having to perform at home or figure yeah. out how to do everything from home down to whatever special effects or using blue or green um, green screens, yeah. and then the coaches are all on chairs at home. So, I, I mean, if, if they're able to do it, and if another country is able to do it, then we're, we'll be able to figure out how to have a finale. Uh, but our season was supposed to end in May. However, with, with so much of what was happening over the last however many months, there was no way that we could end it in May. Our last taping was on the last day of Feb. Um, which I couldn't actually attend because I was in a hospital because I got a really bad infection. No, it was not COVID. But <laughs> it was, in case you were going to ask the question, no, it wasn't. But it was, it was not a fun. It was not fun to be confined in the hospital for about two or three days. Um, but yeah, and then we were able to then get the season kind of back up because um, ABS, there, was, there were times when it would be shut down. So we couldn't air anything. And yeah. then, there, then it came back. And then we could air stuff again. And we could air stuff online. And we were then able to... And then there was a transition to the Kapamilya channel. So we were then able to finish the season off only a couple of weeks ago uh, via that. And we all did everything at home. So Sarah, Apple, Bamboo, myself, uh, Luis, and Alex, all of us did our, all of our on-camera work at home. And... The, the, the wow. thing is, the, yeah, the blessing about that whole thing, about the whole timing of it is, and here's my silver lining. By the time we actually got to film the finale, I think all of us at, at whatever level, we were all more comfortable with um, tech and being able to handle lighting, being able to handle our cameras, being able to figure out Zoom, uh, using our tripods, figuring out angles, figuring out um, backgrounds and whatever else. Um, and that was, I think, if, if this had happened, if we, if we were to film the finale at the beginning of the pandemic, there's no way it would have right. looked as good as it did. Because even the kids were able to figure out how to create their own content for the competition with, with it looking professionally done. So you get, I think even the teenagers were getting used to creating content for themselves even if it was just at home, because they were able to figure out. Of course, there was guidance from Silaichi and all of the tech people from ABS to help us figure out so much of that stuff. But when we were watching everything back, it was like, ang gagaling naman itong mga batang to, being able to figure all of this out. And, and we're all in the middle of this pandemic. <laughs> but you know what? Fight lang. Fight. We're not, we're not going to let this thing... Fine. You know, stop Ichi us. Ichi and Jess or, are watching. Yeah. Ichi, Jess ah, are okay. watching. Ah, <laughs> okay. Hello, you guys. <laughs> okay, so Leia, before The Voice, you were sort of, I mean, like, you were, your audience was mostly, like, the, the rich and the elite. I mean, like, Broadway <laughs> goers and everything. That's the, that's that's the assumption. Just, yeah, that that's the assumption. assumption. That's Parang, the assumption. Yeah, that was the assumption. And then you joined The Voice. And then, it was it a conscious decision to maybe cast a wider net? Kasi parang dun talaga ka nakilala ng masa. Like, you were active on yeah, Twitter uh, and everything. So, what yeah. made you join The Voice? Did you like the concept? Or was it I'm something that appealed to you at the time? I already knew what the show was about. That there were these blind auditions. Which, yeah. I love the format of the show. Kasi, unlike American Idol, where it's like, you see the person first before they sing. So, bale, it's about the, how they look and then the talent comes in second. The package, right? Yeah. Yung package muna yung napapansin, hindi muna yung bosses. However, with the voice, it's baliktad. It's the voice first. Right. And for me, as somebody that's been in this business for so long, <laughs> I mean, I've been, I've been at Your this media. for more than 40 years already. <laughs> no, even before that. So, I mean, I've been at this for, I'm turning 50 next year. It'll be 43 no. years next year. 
Oh, yeah. Girl. It'll, I'll be 50 next year. So, thank you. Tagal pa. <laughs> so, tagal pa. Um, so, for, for, so, when I was being asked, nililigawa na ako ni Lauren Jogi to be on this program, I already knew the format. So, already, already then, it was attractive because of what it was about. It was about the voice first. It was not about how you look first. Na parang yung boses muna. It's that is what's going to get you noticed. And then if you, then bonus na lang kung pati yung packaging mo, swak din sa bosses mo. Yes. But, at the, but at, it's like talent first, talent first, talent first, which is how it's supposed to be. For me, ha? Na yung dapat unang ano hen, it's like it's, it has to be the voice. Because I, I, a lot of, I think a lot of the talent from even back then, Okay, okay, yeah, if you're if you're good looking, it's it's, it's a, that's the bonus, but yes. the actual meat and potatoes of who you are has to be your talent. Um, exactly. And I come from I come from a very old time, long ago when auto tune did not exist. So <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> because I come from a time when it didn't exist, so I didn't have a choice. And my intonation has to be what it is, because I have no help. Right. I had no help back then. So, kawawa ka kung sintonado ka all the time in the 1970s and 80s. Before the invention, before the invention of this. Yeah, well, yeah. But yeah, so a lot of the singers, a lot of the singers from back then, people like Gary, Martin, Jaja, we existed before so much technological advances. Right. That, so, talent. so, diba? So, it's, it's, it's talent, it's, you know, I mean, hindi sa nagbubuhat ako ng bangka for the generation that I grew up in. But yeah, we had it more difficult than a lot of the newer artists now because there was no help. If you were out of tune, right. you were out of luck. Too bad. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. True. But did you ever think that your persona was going to be such an aggressive judge? That talagang, ah, <laughs> you were very passionate. But you I was very like passionate. That. I loved it. And yeah. aggressive and... Yeah, and I would the, the one criticism I would get on The Voice was that I was very OA. And I'm like, you wanted to see my real personality, <laughs> di ba? Bakit kayo nagre-reklamo na OA ako? E, ito naman yung akin. So, I mean, you can't please everybody. It's like, if you're calm, cool, collected, and well put together, you'll get a criticism for being, ay, yes. ang hirap pabutin. Ay, hindi siya pang masa. Ay, hindi namin maabot. Then, when I make myself more accessible, it's like, ay, ang OA niya, ay, ang ingay niya, ay, ang lakas ng boses niya. It's like, saan ako lulugar? Ano ba? Ano, ano ba yung gusto niyo? Yes. So, for me, it's like, you know what? F it. F it. F it all. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I, will, I will be who I am. Cool. If you like it, cool. fabulous. If Sabi you don't Dua like it, pa, then it's okay. F, di ba? I don't give up. Sabi ni Dua yeah. Lipa, di ba? Totoo, di ba? But yeah. I remember, like, everything, of course, started for you with Miss Saigon. But before yeah. Miss Saigon came along, you were enrolled in the Ateneo yeah. for pre-med. You yes. were a successful singer before that. Why did you yeah. want to become a doctor? Did you want to, like, turn your back on singing and maybe become a surgeon? Or no, no, why man. did you enroll in pre-med? I, this is, that, that's, like, I was, something that really blows my mind. You were I think it blows a lot of people's minds. Yeah. yeah. Na parang, huh? Parang hindi yata, it's like, not really? It's bad, ha? No, 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 absolutely not. And, and I made some really good friends out of the classmates that I had when I was in pre-med. I mean, not necessarily oh, those in the... I was only there for a year. Shit. And then I and then I transferred to Fordham University, another Jesuit university. It's like, I guess I'm just faithful. But I don't have Jesuit bread. Yes. <laughs> So I think it's yes. So it's, I, I I think it's just the whole. I think it's the philosophy where you are pushed to think independently and critically, where it's not just about following. Just because you're in a Catholic school, di naman ibig sabihin na kailangan mong sundan yung lahat ng you know. You don't have to follow all the dogma of the Catholic Church. That's not it. It's not. That's not what it's about. At least to me. But yes, I have digressed. So for me. I was genuinely interested in biology. I loved the bio biology subjects I had in grade school and high school. Um, I, I didn't like chemistry very much, so I wasn't looking what? forward to that. But I figured, you know what? If, if I can get through this first year and still be alive and still have a grade point average or the QPI of 
above three, I think I'll, I'll, I'll be okay. Um, and then Miss Saigon came along. So I never really got the chance to, to see if I would, you know, what, what, what a medical career or if, or if I would have finished pre-med at all. Mabuti so, na lang. Yeah. So I never, I, that's a question I'll never get to answer. Aww. But yeah, but I, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And the, the lab is, is the most quiet place to have a conversation. Because Mabuti nobody's gonna go na. in there. Mabuti na lang talaga. Mabuti na lang dumating yung Miss Saigon sa buhay mo, no? Kasi otherwise, we wouldn't have been blessed with this talent and performances <laughs> and everything like role after role and role after role. My favorite of all of your, the, the, the musicals that I've ever seen you in is the Flower Drum Song. When you oh. sang, I enjoy being a girl, dun ko na real, oh shit, I'm a girl. Ganun ka sa life changing. <laughs> Naalala mo ba yung kantang yun? <laughs> I... Yeah, pero I, I mean, I mean the, the character... Eh, sabi ko si Ichi, sabi sa akin, Ichi, kanta mo yan, kanta mo yan. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the big song by Linda Lowe, and she had like right. the big flowing hair, and she undresses into this very sparkly white bikini, and for me, I get to sing the song, but not in the same way, obviously. Um, the context of how Meili sings Mas it magaling, versus yeah. how Linda... La- Thank you, you're very, you're very kind. Um, but I hardly sing that song at all. But I make up for it when I do it in concert. So, yun na lang. But yeah, I love that show. And I've had a really good time. And the cool thing about doing Flower Drum Song, I think it was one of the first times in modern Broadway history, anything past 2000, where you have a, a company of, it's, it's an all-Asian company. It's like, how many times in my life is this, am I going to see this? You know, where everybody in the ensemble is Asian, where everyone in the principal lineup is Asian. It's like, hindi ko na makikita to. Siguro. And then, and then I do Allegiance. And it's like, well, yes. it hit me. And then it hit me twice where majority of the cast was Asian or Asian American. It was unbelievable. It was, Amazing. wow. Amazing. But I just want to point out that you are able to change people's lives and you were able to make them come to a realization just by singing one song. That's what you were able to do for me with I Enjoy Being a Girl. Ang babaw ba? <laughs> no! I mean, there's nothing mababaw about it because anything that prompts a life change or, or causes, or, or parang it, it parang prompts you to start thinking in a deeper way, there's no kababawan there. I mean, if the kababawan is I, I, I like feel so song. validated. <laughs> <laughs> Gusto ko rin yung ano, they're playing our song sa ESP Theater kita na panood noon. Yeah. I, it was Uh-oh. such a fun, Saya. fun experience. It was such, wala, it was just so much fun to do. But it was a hard show to do. Ang hey, hira. It was so sick. Parang, kasi parang dalawa lang kami. It's just, it's, music. no, yeah. the challenge here is that one, it's comedy and it's hard to time. <laughs> It's so hard. Ask anybody who does comedy. It's, it's so difficult. to fi- Because you have to time everything just right. The pace True. cannot really get too slow. Or else it's going to start to turn into a drama. So it's like... It, it, was, it was difficult figuring out the timing. And it's Neil Simon's book. So everything is, is fast. Everything is quick. So my partner and I had to constantly be on top of the script. And on top of one another... So that we could always just come in. And we had to also be conscious of the audience's reaction. So there was so much that... So it was stressful. We had so much to try and stay mindful of. Really? It's, it's, not, it's, a, it's not an easy show to do. But incredibly wow. rewarding because of the, what, what you get out of the audience. And I had... That was, had, such, an, that yeah. was such an, an enjoyable then, experience for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, Grabe, ang saya lang, ang saya lang. And, and the other hard part about it was that while I was doing that show, I was rehearsing for Miss Saigon. So it was like I would commute from CCP where I'd be from like 10 to 6 and then commute all the way to AFP. So eh, buti na lang kasama ko sa show, it was Isai Alvarez. The two of us were in, both in Miss Saigon and in there playing our song. So we would carpool going to AFP straight from rehearsal. So it we you know so it was it was just one of those experiences you just don't forget I'm sure hindi pa ganun yung traffic that time It was pretty bad already but not 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 like this not like well pre covid not like you know True true But like 
aside from the musicals, you were able to do like one super iconic role that everyone remembers. And it is like, I only have three favorite star cinema movies. My Me Na I know where you're going. Sana maulit mo li. You are the embodiment of Agnes. Why oh. do you love Ag- What? How do you see yourself in Agnes? What do you love most about Agnes? Um, I like how where she goes. Eh? Because the way that the script was written um, was that she starts off this very meek, very... You know, very, very unlike me. So it was a very difficult thing to get into. <laughs> even even, even oh, Olive was like, no, Olive was like, when she first met me, I think the first thing she noticed were my eyes. And she's like, ang tapang ng mata mo, ang lakas. Tapang was the, was the word that she used for me. So to, to kind of do a 180 to, in order to be Agnes, it's like after a while, you kind of get used to it. You kind of get used to stepping into it. Pero buti na lang that there were parts of this woman's personality that were closer to me. Kasi she gets matapa. She yeah. does, you know, after everything that she goes through, um, living, you know, in the U.S., you see that she gets stronger. Which, um, which I think is an experience that is common to a lot of people that move away and find their independence and they try to figure out who they are and eventually get to that point. And it's like... Um, Yeah. So how I she's very different. In, she's very for, very different for half of the like, movie, for half of the movie, she's just very different from me. And yeah, and, and the the funny thing is we would have this discussion, this ongoing discussion on how we were going to end this movie. What is the final scene going to be? And so while we were shooting the rest of the movie, we would be in Baguio, we would be in Manila or wherever. We would, we would, we would be like, <laughs> "Paano ba tatapusin yung movie na to?" Because I mean, we we kind of left them in Baguio. They hugged each other. They kind of broke up, oh. and he goes, he goes back. So I think I think there was this, there was this. Are we going to try and, are, what are we going to do? Are we going to 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 follow our art? The, parang Olive's artistic Vision. thinking and and say. In there, they have to be broken up. That's the end of the movie. Well, yeah. nah. There's yeah. that. Or do we do a happy ending? Because that's what the <laughs> fans want to see. We want to see these two people. <laughs> yes, in Ortigas. Before it, before it went, you know, before it's, it became as busy as it is now. It wasn't that busy then. So we're like, so Paduna, how are we going to finish this movie? And so she figured out, You're not going to talk to each other. He just finds you. It's, and then it was like a, you know, we, 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 we kind of have to do what we got to do also because we, you know, people need a happy ending also yes. when we see a film. And especially if it's a love story, you want to see these two together. Yeah. And it's painful. And it's painful seeing them come apart. It was very painful watching it. I mean, I watched it, what, five years ago in UP. One, the movie holds up really, really well. I, I was so surprised, in a good way, at how beautiful this movie still is. And, yeah, yeah and I mean, Agamulak is a beautiful man. So, I mean, Wait. let's just get... Re- <laughs> Ang gandang, gandang lalaki yes. talaga. Everybody yeah. was in love with Agamulak at some point in their lives, di ba? Yeah. How did you feel about working with him in Sana Maulit Muli? Wait, did you previously work with him? I'm not familiar. Bakit labis kitang mahal was our ah, first Ah, with Ariel, movie. with Ariel. With Ariel. Yeah, with Ariel. Yes. Um, yes. But this one, kayong dalawa lang, di ba? Kaming dalawa lang. It's, it, there, was, there were hints of love triangles here and there, but nothing that was... It, but then a love triangle was never ever the main crux of the right, story. Right, right. It, was, it was really these, the relationship of these two people and how each of them would change and how... Pendulums would swing one, you know, how the one pendulum would swing for him and how it would swing for her. If he was doing well, she wasn't. When she was doing well, he wasn't. So it's like, it's, so there's always this constant conflict, but then you could see how these two really loved each other, which is, which is such a beautiful, beautiful story. So that real. Even today, so it's real. still relevant and timely. And, so and oh. yeah, it's still beautiful to watch. So I, how was yeah. it like? How was it working like, with him? Working with such a talented, like 
beautiful actor. Like, was that distracting at any point in your it, shooting? I, you know what? It never was. It's it's the it's the weirdest thing for me to say, and I think okay. a lot of women would be like, "You're out of your epic <laughs> grab because, because he's so yeah, my God. oh, thank you." Um, yeah, I think we just really enjoyed working together. There's mutual respect, and because we had worked together previously, right? So doing this movie was like okay, it's like picking up from where we left off, which is, which is which was a lot of fun, and he's pretty easy to work with. But Super I do easy on the ice. Well, yes, there's that. I mean, <laughs> up to now, up to now, he's, no, no, he's known because for ano, like being close to his leading ladies, diba? Did he ever that's make the, a move that's on was you? The was... Repu- that was the reputation yeah. that he had but coming in. Did he in. ever make a move on you when you were you No. Were Professional. He never, he never did. He never did. To his credit, he, yes. he never tried anything. I mean, yes, my mom was always there, but she but loved him. He, was he single so, at the time? And were you single at the time? Um... There were two parts eh, in the doing of this movie. The part when we were in San Francisco and then the part where we were back here in the Philippines. Right. When we were in San Francisco, he was nursing a broken heart. Oh, so he, he was so in... Bad. Yeah, so he was nursing a broken heart. I mean, I, I find out all these things later. Um, so the heartbreak part was like everything was at the top of his emotional... Right. Um, his emotional cache, he would it would be there. It would be so yeah. easy for him to access. Because heartbroken, eh. heartbroken si Gabu. So, but then when we resumed shooting in Manila, he was start. He was dating Diana Torres. He ah, he and they had okay. just finished making their movie, and I think they got together. So when we shot all of the stuff in Manila in Baguio, Nakamu he was. Na move on nasha. So obviously the heart wasn't so broken anymore. Right. And yeah, so yeah, so I guess it was always just a matter of timing. But good right. for him. You know, I mean, he was with the most beautiful woman on the planet. In the universe. So in the in the universe. In yeah, the and universe. Then, but to be fair, she's really, so, really so beautiful. Young fans to this day. Team I know. And a lot of them are like answering you. Yeah, a lot of them are commenting. Masagot, parang they've been like messaging me the whole week since I announced that you were gonna talk to me. Grabe talaga, as in like I'm dying, devoted. Hindi ko maintindi. Ako rin naman, fan din naman ako. Pero how do you explain this like love team? Fen- like I mean, like this love team phenomenon. Yeah. How do you, I how mean, can you explain it? I mean, both of us have our own families, but then there are still people who who ship us as a showbiz. <laughs> Pair. So people, I think, I'd like to think that our fans are able to separate the reality from the not reality. So there still, there still seems to be a clamor to for see the two movie. of us, to see the two of us on screen. But it needs to be something that eclipses sana maulik muli. And that's a very high Ayan, bar that we hira. set. It's a very high bar to set. It's a high bar that we set. And that's all our fault. You know, we, we <laughs> raised the... We raise the expectations so damn high but that Leah, where do you every, go from here, you know? But Leah, everything you do naman, you set the bar higher for yourself. <laughs> diba? It's not a new feat. I mean, like, come on, diba? Parang... Well, you have to keep setting the bar high. I mean, my mom has this, this thing. It's like you cannot ever pander to yes. anybody when you whenever you have performances you always have to show the best that you have always you know right. and and let everyone come and try to appreciate that na parang babes galing, now. Hi, kailangan babes. oo kailangan kailangan laging galingan <laughs> you know and so dinig pa rin sa inyong lahat <laughs> wait in the song dream again you said that um I miss singing for you. I miss singing for the crowd. Like, how does... I mean that you've done a lot of concerts throughout this pandemic. You did a, a beautiful, be- beautiful, I mean, like, medley with Regine. I mean, like, yeah. lahat ng bakla sa mundo, inaabangan ang duet nyo ni Regine. And it happened, like, you were separated. So it gives us yeah. a lot of, you know, shipping moments. To finally, parang siguro, when this is over, magkaroon tayo ng concert together. How did it feel... To finally sing with her, because of course you sang with her with Sam, yeah, we but have, like, yeah. On her birthday, you sang with her a duet, like a beautiful, yeah. beautiful medley. So how did it feel like working with Regine? 
Well, this is, here's the funny thing. We didn't right. get to actually work together, work together in the traditional sense of working together. Um, I mean, there was a sequence of, of how everything came together. They sent me the minus one, which was created by her musical director, Raul Mitra. Yeah. I got that. So I'm like, yes, just send me the piano track. Bahala na kayo what you do after. Send it to me. I will put my video and my vocals together and send it back to you. So that's what I did. And it was Regine who then, you know, worked around the vocal that I did. And Raul added whatever else needed to be added later on uh, for, her, for her thing. So it was, it was like, but technically, yes, it was the first time we actually sang a duet. Nakabing dalawa lang. That Akala it was a... No, no, this Akala was. This is... No, there was no way that we could do it because there are still latency issues, which is which means that there's always going to be like a one or two second delay. Oh, yeah, mid delay. Uh -huh. Yeah, mid delay. So there, it's impossible for any two people to sing together until that is figured out, or you know, one of the pair. Is com it's constantly conscious of the delay. So it's like always singing either a beat ahead or a beat behind. It's too, it's too difficult. It, mentally, it's difficult. So it's always easy to just pre-record it and then send it. And then bahala na to get pieced together. Do you have to rehearse together, like off camera? No. No, there wasn't. It was like... We, have, we all have that to look forward to, like when we all go back to the concerts. Yeah. We'll be older. I mean, she <laughs> she just turned, was it 50? She just turned, she's a little bit older than me. Eh? So she just turned 50, then I'm turning 50. So yeah, so I mean, the, the moral of the story is that you can be in your 50s and still have something to look forward to. Na hindi pa tapos, hindi pa tapos yung buhay. Saka that you always have, like, yeah. Ng fans, Parang two of the greatest singers ever. In the Philippines, di ba? Parang gano'n, yeah. di ba? Shit, lahat ng bakla magdidiwang. <laughs> lahat ng bakla magdidiwang. And of course, you are also a gay icon. That's why everybody loves you so much. How do you feel about being a gay icon? Does that like add to your laurels somehow? Di ba? Parang, how do you feel about like being a gay icon? Um, I'm not actually sure how I am. But I know that I am because there are a lot yes. of gay because there are a lot of people, a lot of gay people that say, "Oh my God, I love you!" Or, "Oh my God, you're like." So it's like I, maybe it's maybe it's virtue of by virtue of me doing musical theater, which is like one of the gayest art forms. The gayest. It's, the gayest it's, I think it is the gayest. Yeah, yeah. I think it is just just by how many practitioners who are from the LGBT community that are part of it. And it's not just performers, it's directors, choreographers, makeup yeah. artists, clothing designers, wig designers. Uh, everyone from top to bottom, merong bakla, merong tibo. <laughs> there, will be, there will be someone from the LGBT community in some way, shape, or form in right. doing musical theater. So it's a very gay art form. Um, but as for how I became a gay icon, I'm like, I'm not even sure how that happened. Is it that I stand up for gay rights? Is it that I have siblings, cousins who are also members yeah. of the L? Yeah, who are members of the L? Oh my God. I don't think you can get gayer than Jeff. I don't think so. She's I, don't... Like, I know that you watched the RuPaul's Drag Race. She's like my drag mother. Jeff. Oh, Salome. yeah. Okay. She's like my Lola. So there. <laughs> also because I think Leia, Leia, I think because I mean like my favorite Disney princess is Mulan. Not and she's not even a Disney princess. It's because she yeah, defied not technically, yeah. gender norms at the time when yes. you know, it wasn't even talked about. So you were the voice behind I mean like you were also the voice behind Princess Jasmine. And I mean that yeah. for me. But that's Jasmine the most is a very conventional oh, Disney and that's princess. The most beautiful Disney love song I've yeah, for me, that's the most beautiful Disney love song. But Thank you. when you played Mulan, that was, I think, the turning point of you being like, okay, this woman stands for breaking the gender norms and everything. That's my favorite Disney movie. So how did you feel about like being the only woman to play two Disney princesses? Like Mulan's yeah. not a princess. And both, of princesses. and both of them are people of color. So there, there's Correct. that. There's Correct. that also. Um, so here's one POC having to furnish a singing voice for these two characters of color. Um, and one of them happens to be the title character of a movie, which I never thought that I would actually see that 
happen that there would be a Disney cartoon based on a 1,000 or so year old Chinese legend of a cross-dressing woman who ended up being a soldier. And the actual legend was that nobody ever found out that she was a woman until after the war and she got home and then changed her clothes and then surprised the other soldiers around her. Power that's that's the legend. That's Power. the legend. And then with the animated Naman, it was her reason was because my father can't do it, so I have to. And he has no sons. So rather than him give his life, she will do it nala. Because she's the more able, she's the stronger one, she's the younger one. So the motivation, it's less about the self and more about the family. That which is in, which is interesting, but but still, it's. I mean, when you start off this woman's journey with a song called "Reflection," really? that's like <laughs> theme song of mga bakla, theme song of mga bading, theme song of anyone questioning who they are, and it's 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 like onga. Oh, so every time I, I I sing it, I I have a feeling that if there's anybody from the LGBT community that happens to be in the audience. <laughs> They're like, that's my song. That's my song. Simbia. <laughs> Wait, Leia. As I, well, LGBT speaking. Tim Yap and I had a chat and he said that like, like he went to the States to get married to Javi and then yes. he watched your he watched like your show first. I think it was uh, Once on this island. Yeah. Once on this island and in the audience was Aga and Charlene. Okay. And then I think it was in the Christmas season and he said like yes. he approached he and had Javi approached and they said that. We want you to be our witness. But it's our wedding is gonna be on Christmas Day. Tapos sabi mo, I'll be there. I mean, like, my family is gonna be together Christmas Eve. So, you became the witness. So, para talaga yung nasolidify yung pagiging gay icon mo. Ikaw yung witness <laughs> sa kasal ni Tim Yap tsaka ni Javi Martinez on Christmas Day. And it was all yes. over, like, the news. Diba? Parang, ikaw na talaga yung gay icon. Naging witness ka pa, diba? There were two. Yeah, there were two of us. I can't remember the name of the other witness. I have to ask Tim or Javi. But I took a lot of pictures that day, and I think I may have captured the only photograph in existence of Tim Yap, present day Tim Yap, smiling. So I think I. I it's, like, it's like seeing a unicorn in the forest for the very first time. Whoa. So, so that's, that's what happened. But it was such a beautiful day. It was freezing cold, and it was outdoors on the rooftop of Salon, Salon de Ning. So it was, it was an empty. It was an empty rooftop. Walang gumagamit. The salon itself was closed, so nobody was in there. But I guess they just wanted it to be very unique. And it was so simple. And, you know, the, these guys who are like event coordinators and, and they own all of these venues and clubs, you'd think they'd want this big, splashy kind of wedding. Hindi two Literally, two witnesses, one photographer, the lady who officiated the ceremony. That was us. Yun lang. That was just that was just us. It was that there were that few that few, and then we just had lunch in the restaurant downstairs, and then I headed home because it was like, all right, I gotta rest. Or did I have a show that <laughs> night? I don't remember. True. But yeah, but yeah. So when I it get married, like, I'll call you to be the witness also, because you're so supportive. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, if I if I happen not to be doing anything that day. I mean, Seven why not? Minutes left because I promised to let you go at 9.50. Diba? Seven <laughs> minutes left. So in the seven minutes, I just want to ask you, I mean, like, a lot of your fans, diba, parang have been, you know, parang, like, we've been isolated for so long, five months now, and like, not a lot of us can be as productive, like, learn a new skill, like, probably baking or like, do a concert with Regine or maybe, you know, release a new single. Like, how would you inspire people that feel so unproductive in this time of um, isolation and they feel like they're out of reach, out of touch? What are the things that you would say to them? Okay, enjoy the time of being, of doing nothing. Literally. Because sometimes the best ideas come out of that. You cannot force creativity. You cannot force productivity. I have days where my brain is, is literally empty and I have absolutely zero motivation to do anything. And that's not a bad thing. You have to embrace the nothing and allow, allow yourself to recover because there's a lot that's going on in the world at the moment. So 
embrace the nothing and, you know, appreciate the fact that there's nothing going on. And then sometimes it's from there that inspiration will spring or creativity or productivity or the impetus to do something with your time. It, it's, it can't be forced. Eh? And it, I mean, I mean, Ryan Kayabyab said something like there's nothing more inspiring than a deadline. But in this, <laughs> in this time of, of COVID-19, it's like, you know what? You know, it may sound like the laziest thing to do, but embrace the nothing. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with being unproductive. Let your emotions, don't, don't stop the flow of whatever emotion you're feeling. You have to feel let it. go it, through it. Yeah, go through it. If you, if you feel like you have to cry, then do it. If, if, you're, if, you, if you're not amongst people who are supportive of that, then go to the bathroom, look for something look for something sad that you can cry to, and then at least re- to help you release. I mean, everyone has their own way of figuring all that out. Um, everyone is built differently. I am built, I guess, in a way that when I'm home and isolated from other people, that's when I'm most productive. And that's when I seem to find busy, the busy time. Um, but there are people who are only productive around other people. So that's, it's, it's difficult. Right. However, it helps to try to stay in touch with other human beings, even if it's virtual, even if it's via Zoom. And then sometimes inspiration will spring from a conversation that you have that might seem benign on the surface. I mean, sinabi mo, kababawa, me I enjoy being a girl, and then you start questioning your sexuality. It's like, there are sometimes it, on the surface, it doesn't look like much, but then it might, you know, it might all of a sudden be your unique call to action to do something. So it's, it's just, just, just be, just be. Don't force yourself to be anything or do anything, just exist. Exist in the nothing and then maybe something will come of it. It's the That's weirdest cool. piece of advice to say. No, um, it's very sound advice. But yeah, but just exist in the nothing yeah. and be sound. Oh my God, that's so sound. I mean, like, yeah. as a last question, Leia, I feel like, I mean, like, we're all trapped in a small place where we have to be with our loved, surrounded by our loved ones, like 24-7. Yeah. And that's not entirely a bad thing, di ba? Parang yeah, a lot of not entirely, are, but yeah. It's not entirely a bad thing. But I just want to ask, I mean, like, how do you feel about, you know, five months being locked in with as a wife and as a mother and as an artist? How does this pandemic, how has this pandemic changed you as an artist, as a wife, and as a mother? Huh. Let me try to think about that one. I think you start to appreciate the time that you have with the people that you love. Um, I'm loving the time I get to spend with my daughter. I mean, she has started online school, and I'm the resident math tutor. So Galera. for her, it's yeah. So for her, it's like, yay, mommy is here, is home <laughs> all the time. The math tutor is at reach all the time. So I think for her, it's been an interesting time because then I have to revisit these old concepts of mathematics that I haven't seen since high school. <laughs> That I now have to, yeah, I mean, scientific, scientific notation and, you know, I mean, figure and doing square roots and figuring all of that out and learning with her. So it's been a really good time. And then I get challenged by my husband. That's how the baking started. So I got challenged by him to learn something. So can you learn how to make that? All right. I don't back away from a challenge. So, So, well... Kind of, but I'm, I'm still also looking forward to the day when I can actually get back on stage and do that because it's like, it's great doing yeah. the gigs here at home. It's great. It's fantastic. However, iba pa rin to be on a stage in front of thousands of people in the same room as you, um, breathing the same air as you. There was a time when breathing the same air as somebody didn't cause death. So now yeah. it's, it's a little <laughs> dangerous. But yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that day. But I, it'll be a while, but I, I can wait. I'm very patient. I bake sourdough. Will, I am very, very patient. And we will all wait for that day that we finally see you again with a full orchestra on stage. Yes, yes, yes. I can't wait I want to thank you. It's 9.50. I promise to let you go at 9.50. It's exactly <laughs> 9.50. And I want to thank you for 
talking to us tonight. Oh, you're welcome. This was my your pleasure. Your luxury. Talaga, salamat ng marami, Lea. <laughs> we will all learn thank from you. you again because of your single. Maraming maraming thank you. I want to thank you personally like for being such a moving force in my life. Like in all the stages of my life from Love, Lea to like um, Flower Drum Song, Miss Saigon, like lahat talaga. Salamat ng marami. Oh, you're very welcome. And then I have to say that like working with you has always been fun. When I see you at events with for ABS-CBN or for the Christmas special or for whatever, um, I mean, you always struck me as one of the smarter writers at ABS. <laughs> as it's like, it's like. Pero meron ako ginawang concert mo, ano Philippine First Holdings 50th anniversary. I yeah. toiled over that script the whole night. Hindi ako natulog. And when I came to rehearsal the next day. So I go, shit, she's gonna fire me. She's gonna tell me, shit, fire her. But you only made one revision. It was such a minor revision. I don't even remember what revision it was. But I want to thank you because, like, my God, my whole life and my career is blessed by working with you. And for oh, knowing thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. 91, so I'm really gonna let you go. <laughs> Bye, Leah. Thank you so much. Thanks, G3. Thank you very much for having me. Bye. Of course. Bye. Love ya. Oh my God, I got through that. Grabe. Hindi ako, nadal, hindi ako na tongue-tied or anything. But yes, oh my God. I can breathe easy. Oh my God, when you talk to legends, it's kind of like nerve-wracking to begin with. And I forgot, like, um, I was drinking um, Mixed Mojo, old-fashioned. So thank you, Sir Deo and PJ. And I want to thank Nina Richie, Eliazar, Una Richie for my top. And yes, oh my God. So I am been on youtube for a few days now and this interview is going to be on youtube by midnight so if you didn't catch it or you want to catch it again then you can watch it on youtube so thank you so much guys oh my god ayos ichi okay bye ichi ay shit so let's see who's here sana kumanta ako gusto mo ba akong I hope you learned a lot from my conversation with the one and only Leah Salonga. She was, of course, Jasmine, Mulan, Eponine, Miss Saigon, Kim, whatever. Like, sobrang dami. So, I just want to thank everyone for really tuning in. Like, all of my family and my friends are here. Lika na. Inom na tayo. Sheep cheers for... Yeah, so I think that went well. I don't know. What do you think? Did you think that went well? Super pretty naman. Mori. Yeah, so I was able to ask her everything I wanted to ask her, like including um, Agnes and like Agamulak, lahat. So, how do you feel about that? Thank you, Ricky. Di ko na na comment. Tot gasi aga. May Dayanara Torres pala. Every week you're upgrading, galeng. <laughs> so, parang the next week. Watching from London. Hello. So yes, oh my God. So please watch out for this conversation on YouTube at midnight. Good job. Thank you. Nakita ka ng katapat. Very good. Ay, thank you, Jessa. Jessa is my producer. Shout out, Miss G. Thank you. Oh my God. I was like so stressed and I didn't know if I was gonna like do well. Thank you. Hi, huge. Ang ganda mo po. Thank you. So I hope you enjoy that Leia conversation and I hope that you watch it again on YouTube. And I hope you, it's sobrang dami kong natutunan as in like, I mean like Leia being like the busiest woman in show business, like she was working even before Love Leia. And all of a sudden, di ba, parang now that we're all in this together, so parang she learned a new skill, she released a new single and everything. And it's just so, such a joy to, to talk to her, to pick her brain and you know, to learn from her. Talaga ba ako na producer? Gusto mo ba, Jess, ha? Magkano'y babayad ko sa'yo? Big reveal ang Dayanara. True! So inspiring. Thank you for this evening, Miss G3. Watching from Phuket, Thailand. Taray, may signal sa Phuket. This is all my all-time favorite live with G3. Thank you, Samantha. Meryl Street na next. Taray, o nga, paano na yan? See you na next week. My God, Leia na yung, ano. Guys, sinong gusto niyong mapanoon next week? Wala pa ako na i-invite. Sa two lang, si Lea na, ano? Miss Lea na sa kanya ang iyong lahat. True! Totoo! Sana maulit muli. My God, that's my third favorite movie of star cinema. Sana maulit muli. Olivia Lamasa. 
Then I'm fired. Char. Michelle! My next interview is Brad Pitt. And we're gonna talk about his divorce with Angelina Jolie. Alright. Grabe, I stand. Bonch tumale. Giselle Sanchez next. Alright. Mega star next week. So anyway, I want to thank you for watching tonight. I have been preparing for this the whole week. Sabi ko, oh, yuck, masyadong hawak ng buhok. Yuck, masyadong salita. Patapusin ko sa nasa. Kasi I'm learning, di ba? Parang I really, really didn't know how to, you know, conduct interviews except off screen, like behind the camera. I used to do that. That was part of my job in ABS-CBN when I used to do scripts. But now, like, I realize that being on camera, like, it requires you to be able to control your talkativeness. And I'm very talkative. So, I don't know if I did a good job with Leia. Na hindi ako masyadong nagsalita. G sa longa next. Yes! Oh my God, si Jeff. Angie Mead King. Boy Abunda. Yun. So, anyway. Like, part of my cache now. My conversation cache is Leia sa longa. And, you know, it's always gonna be there. And, yeah, I'm very happy about it. And for those who haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, like and subscribe, G3 San Diego. The link here. Trust, wala akong graphics. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I will see you next week. I will announce my guests in the coming week. So thank you so much. Bye. Good night. It's starting to rain here in Montalban. Good night.